welcome back to Identity Insights by Indicio. I'm your host, Tim Spring, and today I'm joined by Indicio team lead, Mike Ebert, and he's here to discuss the recent announcement of open badges being added to Proven. Thank you for joining us today, Mike. Would you mind starting us off with a little bit about yourself? Hi, Tim. So uh, I am the enterprise and mobile team lead at Indicio. I've been with Indicio for uh, three and a half years. And I get to manage engineers who work on all sorts of different technologies related to verifiable credentials and decentralized identity. So I get to do lots of cool things and and know about a bunch of different things. Awesome. Well, no, I appreciate you taking the time to come talk to us today. Uh, so jumping into it, what are open badges? What do we mean when we say that term? So open badges uh, are a specification for uh, JSON LD credentials. There's a, basically a, a set of standards that they follow, and uh, in particular, a large batch of what's called a context where they've thought about um, what kind of attributes or fields belong in each kind of uh, you know, schema or type of credential. And so it's yeah, a set of those that are usable in ways that everybody will understand. Okay. Uh, could you give us an example of that would be something that you would use an open batch for? So they're very commonly used for uh, educational certification or achievement type purposes. So uh, similar to like a merit badge or a certificate or um, a diploma, those kind of things, as far as, you know, that's the most common use case. So why did Indicio decide to add open badges to prove it? Is there anything that makes Indicio's open badges kind of unique or special in any way? The previous versions of open badges, uh, you know, required the use of a website or an API for verification. And the new version allows you to use uh, wallets and uh, to be able to pass the credential and verify it um, without using the website or the API. And there aren't as many providers that can issue two wallets or do the verification without the API. And so we felt that that was a useful thing to offer to the marketplace. Um, using a wallet gives uh, gives you some interesting benefits. Uh, and in particular, it gives the user control over who they share them with and uh, allows you to use things like selective disclosure, where you can disclose uh, just some of the attributes of a credential and, and perhaps not all of them. And that's not important for every credential, but for some that might be a good idea. And that's something that you really can't do with uh, an API or a website, um, and you can do with a wallet. And another interesting thing is that you can share that credential without having to call back or reference or access the original issuer. And so if you're worried about um, them finding out who you shared it with or how many times you're verifying it or whatever, um, you don't have to check back with that system. And that, that allows you to keep the credential in your wallet forever, even if the issuing organization were to go out of business. See, that is that sounds pretty useful and, and interesting. So say, Right, I'm thinking of a credential issued by a school, say my diploma. If the university went away, see, people could still tell that my diploma is real and valid and all that? Exactly, you'd still have that credential in your wallet. Um, whereas if you had didn't have the wallet type solution, then you, you know once the API or the website goes away, then you're out of luck. And you have to remember that it's not just big organizations like universities that issue these kind of credentials. They're small organizations and all sorts in the middle as well that are issuing them, such as you know, a cosmetology school or a startup or a local nonprofit, they can issue open badges as well. And they're at a lot more risk of going out of business. So being able to keep them in your wallet, even if the issuer goes away, is a really useful thing. All right. Um, so I'm curious what exactly the difference is between an open badge and a verifiable credential. Because I know that, right, obviously we have verifiable credentials through Proven already. And I'm wondering if there's any functionality that's added uh, to an open badge that is, say, wasn't covered before or, or is unique to the open badge uh, technology. So open badges, uh, in short, are a flavor or a type of verifiable credential. And uh, there's a whole variety of verifiable credentials. They each have their own uh, nuances and strengths and weaknesses and uh, proven you know, at Indicio, we're trying to be standards agnostic and provide uh, all of the formats and credentials that are useful to people. And so adding open badges to the mix was a really good idea. So, you know, presently we've got a non-creds and then open badges are uh, a particular uh, set of uh, standards and schemas that go with 
JSON LD credentials. Those are supported, um, you know, now by by proven. We'll be adding SD Jots to, you know, there are a, a number of European standards that want to use those. So we'll be offering a variety, and Open Badges is one of them. So what is the compatibility for Open Badges or you know something along these lines uh, look like? Right, you mentioned it's a flavor of verifiable credentials. So does that mean uh, when implementing your solution, you can just say, hey, I want to use open badges instead of whatever else? Or how does that kind of play into an existing system? So the idea here is that um, you would have to have a way to differentiate between uh, one flavor of verifiable credential and another as you use your system. And uh, for proven, that means that in the user interface, that uh, we'll have a separate menu that says, you know, select from you know, here's a menu for your non-creds. Here's one to select from for your uh, your open badges or JSON LD credentials, um, and that's you know something in the UI that would happen. And then in the for the API where Proven allows you to interact with it via a API calls, uh, there'll have to be a a flag or a setting in the API call that says we're using this particular type of credential and we want to do this thing with it. And so, um, but the the integration path, you know, the workflow that you use or the API call that you make, um, it'll feel very similar to the other things that you do with Proven. They'll just have a few extra settings to say, we're doing open badges now. All right, that's cool. So it sounds like it would be a pretty easy uh, change, right, in the system. It's clicking a few buttons and selections rather than reformatting anything. Yeah, we've we've done our very best to make it about as simple as verifiable credentials ever get. <laughs> Perfect. Um, so how would you get started if you wanted to create an open badge solution using Proven? So uh, Proven, you know, we have a 30-day free trial for Proven. And so the idea would be to get in touch with us. We can help you get set up with uh, that free trial. And then uh, we'll hand you the, the documentation for the API and the user interface and uh, give you some contact info in case you get stuck and say, all right, go give it a try. Awesome. Thanks, Mike. I think that brings us to the end of our conversation for today. If you at home are interested in learning more about verifiable credential technology and would like to learn more, please be sure to subscribe to the channel. We'll be continuing to bring you some more educational content and the latest from the community. If you'd like for us to cover any specific topics or have any specific questions, please be sure to leave a comment below and we'll be sure to read and address them. Thank you again to you, Mike. Uh, if people are interested in open badges and would like to learn a little bit more, uh, where would you suggest they look? A good place to start would be the Open Badges page on the Indicia website. You can also go to openbadges.org for uh, information from the organization that published these standards in the first place. Yeah.